Hey guys, so this is going to be a bit different of a video um, than the other countdown days. Um, I kind of been wanting to make a video like this for a while because I, I get a lot of um, questions and or uh, comments, angry, um, uh, about my, you know, kind of favorites on um, Game of Thrones. And I also wanted to do a video where it was kind of just like a talking sort of video so I could do it all in one take and, you know, um, it's just less editing for me. I'm doing a lot of these videos and it takes up a bit of time. So, yeah. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk about kind of my journey going through the show and how I've come to really love uh, the Lannisters over uh, most of the other characters. Um, so yeah, I mean, I know uh, I have talked a little bit about it before and stuff, but so this is just going to be a video if you don't like kind of rambly videos and stuff like that. Um, you probably won't like this. You can tune in tomorrow for <laughs> something different. So. Um, I started watching Game of Thrones when it started airing. Um, I was not somebody who caught up later. Um, I was always, it got a lot of buzz, so, um, and I was always reading, like, TV blogs and stuff, because I'm a, just, I love TV in general. And, um, sorry. <laughs> um, I really wanted to watch it um, and even though I'm not a big fan of fantasy um, but a lot of times it didn't it didn't look like a typical fantasy uh, show or movie what you know um, and so I was excited and I started watching it and I really liked um, the you know um, right off the bat I really liked Tyrion I think Tyrion was my favorite pretty early on. Um, I think it solidified him when he was Catelyn's prisoner uh, as my favorite because he was just um, really kind of great and um, <laughs> logical, funny. There's something really wonderful about Tyrion's character. Um, he's my favorite. He still remains to be my favorite. So. Um, and, you know, you go through the first season, it was interesting, they kind of focused solely on, you know, like Targaryens, Lannisters, Starks, and, you know, a little bit of Baratheon, you know, but, you know, for the most part, that was, they were really kind of trying to, like, um, introduce you to the house as kind of true to the story. Um, I loved a lot of Starks. Um, Rob was probably my favorite. Um, I'm trying to think, um, and I liked Daenerys and Drogo and, and I liked a lot of the characters, um, but going through the first season, I did not hate Jaime and Cersei, which I feel like most people, you get anybody who watches the show for the first time, especially, I mean, throwing a kid out the window on your first go, you know, first episode not entirely the best way to get people to like you, you know what I mean? Um, but, um, I didn't love them, but I didn't hate them. And there were times, um, even before I kind of really cared for the characters, that I kind of was, felt like either bad for them or, um, I kind of saw their point of view more so than, you know, um, I wasn't the biggest fan of Robert and I definitely, there were a couple of things that he said to Jamie or said to Cersei that I was like, wow. Um, so it was funny. I didn't love them all just yet, but it was, you know, I didn't hate them. We meet Tywin. I mean, Tywin, Charles Dance, let's say, is brilliant among brilliance. I mean, he's just everything, <laughs> really. 
Um, that man can command a room. He could say, you could, you could give him anything like on the script to say, and I swear I would think it was the most important thing that's ever come out of his mouth because he just has that presence. I would probably say, to me, Tywin, uh, based off of presence, is the most intimidating character in Game of Thrones. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that I could think of anybody else um, that kind of had that sort of presence about him. Um, and again, I didn't really, you know, I wasn't super rooting for the Lannisters at that point. Tyrion was my favorite. And then we got into season two. Season two is one of my favorite seasons, um, so was season four. And season two was when I fell into the deep end of the Lannister love, <laughs> which, um, They fascinated me more so than any other characters, any other storyline. I'm a big fan of relationships. I'm a big fan of how people relate to one another, how people uh, grow up the way they do, how they've formed their own um, personality based on nature or nurture or whatever. Like, I love looking into that. So for me, uh, the Lannisters are kind of a gold mine in in that sense. We have uh, three children who I feel like are very different characters, um, and two of them, meaning Cersei and Tyrion, really don't like each other, and. Are always trying to best the other one. Cersei and Tyrion, uh, as you've heard from my last video, are my favorite dynamic of the entire show. I love that they're always trying to one-up each other. Um, but it's not just that, you know, I kind of talked about that already, but it's not just that um, that I loved. I did love that, but it was really fascinating for me to kind of see, like, these three children, I say children, but you know, um, of Tyrion, Jamie, and Cersei to kind of figure out what makes them tick. Jamie is the most confusing out of all of them. And, you know, if you think about going into uh, how they were raised, Mom died giving birth to Tyrion. I don't know too much about the Lannister mother. Maybe she was caring, I don't know. <laughs> but we do know Tywin. Tywin's not the best father on the planet. Great uh, warrior, strategist, you know, like, you know, but, um, father? <laughs> And, you know, obviously, I feel like Tywin was more concerned about the family name than about, you know, nurturing his children. And he molded these kids into, uh, you know, all in their own way, soldiers to make sure that the family name stays intact. Hasn't worked out too well. It really went off the rails a little bit now, didn't it? But there's as much as I think Tyrion, Jamie, and Cersei are so very different. I do believe that the like kind of the one thing that they have in common is that they're not um, weak. They're not cowards. None of them. You can say what you will. A lot of people love to remind me that Cersei is so stupid. I love, a lot of people like to say, like, Jamie's actually a really horrible person. Whatever. It's very difficult to break a Lannister spirit. I like that. One of the qualities that I really love about 
Lannisters is that it's very difficult to break them. Jaime as a prisoner was like the epitome of proof of that. Um, you know, he it was quite an entertaining prisoner. I don't know how you feel about it, but I kind of liked his time as a prisoner, especially with Brienne and stuff like that. Even after he got his hand chopped off, um, and he's <laughs> and um, you know d that scene where him and Brienne are at the dinner, and he's just like, and you're just sitting here watching me fail at dinner. What is that like? He just kind of still has a quick, little bit of a wit, a little bit, you know. And I think it probably was ingrained into them very early on that you do not show weakness to anyone, uh, anyone. I wouldn't, I was, I was about to say anyone who isn't a Lannister, but anyone. Um, and you got to kind of think about how um, just Tywin being your parent, how that changes you. Um, and... I would assume the reason why Tyrion turned out, you know, quote unquote, the best is probably because Tywin put more pressure on Jamie and Cersei. You know, Jamie really was probably the, the golden child, right? The, you know, Cersei was, um, you know, she had to represent the family in you know whatever she kind of whoever she was going to go off and marry you right and Tyrion probably had a little bit more freedom than Jamie and Cersei did growing up and I don't mean that he had a better time I'm not saying that I'm saying that of Tywin's control um I think Tywin still tried to instill Lannister values into Tyrion but it seemed like he really wanted to groom his, you know, um, Jamie and Cersei for moving forward. Um, so, okay. <laughs> I have so much, I could talk about the Lannisters for a really long time. I'm going to try not to make this video like a million minutes long. I'm really sorry if I do. So, that's where the fascination started. That's where I was like, wow, this family dynamic is something else. You can kind of tell that Jamie was always a little bit of a peacemaker between Tyrion and Cersei. You know, he genuinely loves both of them. I would say he probably loves one a little bit more than the other. <laughs> you know. But um, it was interesting that when Jamie was taken prisoner, that we have Cersei... And Tyrion um, really kind of going at it. Um, Cersei did some not so nice things <laughs> to Tyrion. To, you know, I mean, you know. Um, and, uh, Tyrion, okay. The whole thing with Marcella. I do not believe that Tyrion would have sent off his niece, right, to enemy territory to be like, you know, she's probably going to get killed. She's whatever, right? Um, I don't think he thought that would ever happen or anything bad would happen to her else. I do not believe that he would do that. I mean, you guys can say what you think about that, but um, I don't think that was completely out of spite, but I think he slightly enjoyed making Cersei a little upset. <laughs> but um, it is interesting watching that and seeing how that played out, I can imagine Cersei's going to have a lot of resentment towards. I think it's it's funny because um, they have so much resentment towards each other, which is why I love the dynamic between the two, and I really want them to see each other again. 
really, really do um, because the tension is crazy. Now, I'm more Team Tyrion on this. He didn't intentionally, well, I guess he intentionally killed Tywin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he super intentionally killed Tywin. But, you know, that was after all of this other shit happened to him. So, I mean, you know, but think about Tyrion is furious at Cersei for um, putting him on trial. Cersei and and everything that went with, and the multitude of things before that, and you know, especially after he kind of basically won the Battle of Blackwater. Sorry, all right, anyway. Cersei believes, whether you agree with her, but in her mind, she believes Tyrion killed her mom, Tyrion killed her dad, Tyrion killed her son, and inadvertently, Tyrion killed her daughter. Uh, um, like, come on, this is gonna be great when they meet up, and it's gonna be scary, and Jamie's just gonna be, like, up shit creek, like, what the fuck are you gonna do? Um, so I really do kind of hope that happens. I know that it's possible it may not, um, but it's, you know, uh, I, I really kind of want to see that happen. Also, I think the journey of uh, all of these characters were, I think Tywin was pretty, you know, throughout, pretty steady of a character. He didn't really change too much. Um, fly, I swear. There's been a fly, if you've noticed in my videos, for like, and I can't kill it. I've tried so much and I can't kill it. It's like me versus this fly and it's you know I'm gonna get it at some point um anyway so um <laughs> that was I'm sorry but um so Cersei um Cersei Tyrion and Jamie I really like all of their journeys throughout the show Jamie is the most interesting um in the sense of you don't know what, you never know what's coming with Jamie. You know, sometimes he does some things that are pretty horrible. Sometimes he does some things that are really, they kind of take you aback and you go, oh yeah, you're kind of an asshole sometimes. And then sometimes he does the sweetest thing and the bravest thing. And it, it's so interesting to see what makes Jamie tick. Tyrion, one of the ultimate underdogs of the show, to have a family who disregards you so much, um, and to kind of see him do everything he can. We first saw the journey of him becoming this kind of big hero for the Lannister family, right? Um, with the Battle of Blackwater and things like that, and his speech and the, ugh, the best. Um, then we kind of see um, his kind of frustration start to come to the surface. Then the whole thing with Joffrey happened and the trial and everything was a little crazy with that. And then we see him finally kind of, kind of find a bit of purpose um, with Daenerys little bit of acceptance for all of the kind of good things that he does and that's I really like that um, though I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of Daenerys um, I'm also not the biggest fan of Tyrion I, I just don't I I have trust in the writers that they're still gonna do Tyrion justice I just don't want Tyrion to be Daenerys's kind of for lack of a better term, like her lackey, <laughs> you know, like I really don't want that to be where they go. And I don't think they will, but there is a little bit of nerves with that. You know, I love him and I want him to shine. Um, <laughs> Cersei. Cersei is just, I mean, my love for her is like crazy, but I'm just to see. And it's funny in season one, if you go back and watch, 
she makes some like good points and she thinks a lot more clearly in season one than she does in season six. The journey of the Mad Queen is one of my favorite things to watch and I don't understand how more people don't love it <laughs> because it's you know, she was never a nice person. She was never a sweet, innocent, naive person. She didn't trust anybody. She hated everybody. And she was, you know, ready to fuck anybody up who came for her, right? So, but it was funny. I, there were a couple of scenes where she made some points to, to Joffrey, who, I mean, her biggest mistake is giving him so much power and... You know, like Tyrion says that, you know, like he's, he, he gave this boy like so much, I mean, anyway, that's not the point of what I'm trying to say right now. But, you know, that's, that's her downfall is like giving Joffrey all of the, I mean, goodness gracious. But she's giving decent advice to Joffrey. And it was just really funny because I said, I don't, when I was watching it, I said, I don't think she has that logical mind anymore. And we've slowly but surely seen her get to the point where she doesn't really care too much about logic and what is the smartest move. She just kind of wants to watch people die, in my opinion. Um, I think she wants, you know, when, when she kind of says, if anybody is laughing about the queen who walked naked in the streets for her shame, I want to know about it. I want to fucking, let's do this. So, to me, watching that and watching this villain, I mean, she's always kind of been a villain, but this now very big villain be born out of these circumstances. We already have a person who doesn't, who, um, thinks very highly of herself. She knows her position. She doesn't trust anyone. And then we're starting to see her children kind of drop like flies. The only thing she cares about. I, I debate the fact that she even cares about Jamie. I'm not entirely sure she... Okay. She can Okay. I, I will say, because I, I know that a lot of people will just dismiss it and be like, of course she doesn't care. She, you know... I think she cares about Jamie. I think she's disappointed in Jamie. Not rightfully so. I've spent a lot of time trying to like <laughs> into the mind of Cersei. Um, where she, um, and like how, you know, she's crazy. <laughs> but um, where she, I think, you know, and Lena Hetty uh, uh, said this um, in a, panel once and she said you know um i think cersei wants to be jamie i think that's the epitome of the character i think she's frustrated as fuck that she was born a woman um and she's been told all her life that what she is good for is basically opening her legs and breeding and one of the scenes i actually do actually feel very bad for her is when you know after she like she gets sold off to robert she's in a 17 year loveless marriage she gives birth. Her son is on the fucking throne. And then they're like, oh, you have to marry Loras anyway. I mean, I'd be upset if I had to marry Loras too. <laughs> sorry. That's so much shade. I'm sorry. But, um, you know, and it's just like, I mean, come on. She did. <laughs> she already got two kings on the throne. Okay. Maybe they didn't last that long. But, you know. Um, but she's been told her whole life that's her purpose. That's what she does. And I think within this last kind of season, this especially after the walk in the streets, she kind of said, all right, time to go. I'm going to do this now. I think she, again, not so deservedly so, resented Jamie for getting taken. Um, and she kind of resented, you know, I think she thinks that she could do it better if she was a man if she was in Jamie's shoes. And I think that she has that resentment um, boiling inside of her. I think she does love Jamie, but I think she 
at some point got frustrated and just wanted to take everything into her own hands, leading to her blowing up the set. Which was kind of wonderful for me. Um, so I, uh, all of these journeys, Jamie and Tyrion and Cersei were my favorites to watch throughout the show. They still will be. The dynamic between them, how is Jamie going to, you know, eventually we're going to get to the point where Tyrion's going to go up against Cersei in one way or another. Um, and Jamie's going to be stuck in the middle of that. We've seen some kind of interactions with Jamie with other people where he's been just a very kind of sweet person. Is Jamie going to finally turn on Cersei? I. Well, I'll get into that later, but, um, you know, is he going to finally turn on Cersei or is he going to, sorry, that's my stomach, <laughs> I'm hungry, um, or is he going to, uh, you know, get, stick with her until the end and, like, fall with her? I'm also quite fascinated to figure out who is going to kill Cersei, who I would like it to be Jaime or Tyrion. As much as a lot of, I would absolutely, I would be kind of upset and I'm totally blunt with you guys, I would be kind of upset if it was Daenerys or Jon that killed Cersei. Not because I like Cersei more than Daenerys and Jon, I do, but um, it's not, it's not that at all. It's the fact that I feel like so many other people, it just means more to them. You know what I'm saying? Then like, they haven't been directly affected by her wrath as much as like Tyrion has. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to go for the ultimate revenge, great scene. We got Tyrion over here. If you want to do a little more poetic and possibly kind of sad, we got Jamie over here. Those are my two candidates. I don't really want it to be anybody else. Um, not even, sorry, not even Arya. Um, because I just feel like Jamie and Tyrion are the most affected by everything that she's done. Anyway, so, um, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to wrap it up. I know that this is really long and I'm sure none of you are watching like this whole thing. Um, but you know, we've got a villain, a kind of in the middle. We don't really know what we're going to get. And then like the ultimate good guy. And it's all in one family. They're all kind of you know, intertwined into this kind of strange, um, journey, <laughs> like, and, um, I, I love watching it. I love seeing it. I think it's, um, they're, they're, they're my favorites. They're the most interesting to me. And, um, I think I can't wait. I can't wait. Love my, my Lannisters, and um, I know that, yeah, there's probably a lot of you that don't agree, and um, but I kind of wanted to do a video where I kind of talked about why and, and what, I, what I love in characters and what I love in, in shows and, uh, and kind of explain it a little bit more because I do get a fair amount of hate <laughs> for being so Lannister, you know heavy with my love. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye!